The third step of SQ3R is the first R, and that is to read. Read and take notes. You have that question in your mind from the previous uh, letter, and so while you have that question in mind, please read through the passage, and it's going to describe things. It might even give examples, and you need to look for that answer. So then, from the example that I gave you earlier, what is science? You're looking in the text, whether it's one paragraph or two paragraphs or an entire page, you're looking for where it says, science is. And when, it, when you see that, that's your clue that you need to write it down, science. Now, how much do you write down? When you're trying to take notes for yourself, and this whole process is for you to become an independent learner, this whole process is so that you take enough notes that it will trigger your memory for what you read. So if you only need to write down an organized way to solve problems, fine. If you need to write the entire sentence, fine. If you need an example that might be given in the text, write that down. If you don't need the example to make it a concrete idea in your head, then don't. You will find that when you are reading and taking notes, we're basically going backwards. When you have a full essay, full paragraphs, before you write that essay or paragraph, you sort of do brainstorming and then you might make a graphic organizer, then you might make an outline, and then you might write your rough draft. Well, here we're going backwards. We have the finished copy that's the, in the textbook, and we're asking you to break it back down into like an outline format. So you're going to write down like key phrases, key words. You don't have to write it in complete sentences. We're not asking you to write more. We're just asking you to be more focused in your note taking and only write what is critically important for you to remember. How can parents help with the reading and taking notes? Once they have written down what they have, ask them if they got the most important thing from that. Did they read all the way to the bottom? Oftentimes, especially in middle school, when they're not really, you know, college-minded at this point, they have a tendency to just look for one fact, and then they go, oh good, I got the answer, and they don't read the rest of the passage. And there might be very important terms or examples in there. So ask them if they've read down to the bottom, and maybe you could read down and just see if there was anything important uh, that they might want to add into their notes. Sometimes, your child might be one of the ones who are so, you know, conscientious, they're overachieving, and they have trouble discerning what is the most important information. And so they have a tendency to write everything down. And so if you could review what they wrote down in their notebook and actually see whether or not they have what I call fluff in there, unnecessary things, then that would help them in, in finding out what's an important fact and what's not. Please understand that any teacher or professor will usually assign a reading um, assignment before they go over it in class. And so the idea is for them to do independent research and to pre-read so they have an idea of what they're going to be discussing. And that almost all teachers will go over that material in class and then they can compare notes with what the teacher has as well. And they can add in notes if they missed any or they can highlight the ones that were really the key focal point of the lesson, okay? So you can help your, your child by just reviewing, you know, take one or two passages. You don't have to read the entire book, but just to see if they're getting set on the right track. And it is a skill that they're developing, so they're not going to have it in one day. It is a process that a teacher should work through the entire year. 